Hey guys, quick tutorial. Today I'll be teaching you how to implement helicopters using the vehicle body node. So let me show you what I got so far. As you can see, once we switch to our helicopter, we have the ability to move around. We can also take off, rotate our vehicle, and we move in the direction that we're leaning in all directions. and we can land our vehicle. So that's pretty much it. So let me show you how I did that. So first things first, let's talk about setup. Open up your Blender folder and open up the Sikorsky helicopter model, new inherited. The first thing we're gonna do is change this to a vehicle node, vehicle body node. The second thing we're gonna do is click on the body, click on mesh, create single convex sibling, and drag the mesh into the nucleation shape, just like that. The second thing we're gonna do, we're gonna click on our wheels. So we have our back right wheel over here. We're just gonna go to our vehicle body motion, set this traction on, go to wheel, set the radius as 0.2, set suspension 0.1, stiffness is 50, and we'll do the same thing for the back left wheel as well. So vehicle body motion. Traction. Radius is 0.2. Suspension travel 0.1. Stiffness as 50. And for the front wheel, what we're going to do, we're going to set the vehicle body motion user steering. Set the radius to 0.15. Set the travel to 0.1, stiffness to 50. And the very last thing we're going to do is we're going to go to our Sikorsky vehicle and change the weight or the mass, the weight to 1,600. We're just going to rename this as Sikorsky. And we're going to be adding our camera. So we're going to be using the same camera script as our previous vehicles. So if you don't know what that script is, I'm just going to show you real quick. So our setup, we add a child, we add a spatial node, which we're going to rename as camera. Then I'm going to add a spring arm. We're going to set the collision mask as layer two. Then we're going to add a clip camera. And then we're going to attach a script. So this is the script here, um, same as the previous tutorial, so I won't go over it. Um, just pause the video and take a second to look at the script. Double check that everything is the same as your previous script. What we're going to do now, we're just going to click on 3 on the numpad to go to right orthogonal view, or you can click on here to set it manually. And we're just going to make sure that everything is aligned. So to do that, we're just going to click on everything here. Going to move it up by one, back by one, and make sure everything is in the center. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to get our camera. Going to make sure that's in the center. Move it up by one, and we're just going to raise it by 0 0.5, so it's just above the helicopter itself. The thing you want to make sure as well. You want to make sure that our origin point is at the dead center so everything is moved just above that origin point like that all right so now that's done we're ready to work on the sikorsky helicopter script itself so the concept actually for this script is very similar to um, our previous tutorial with the aircraft so let me show you so we have our movement script as normal. This is everything that we use for every previous vehicle in the past. The only thing is we change our horsepower to 50 and our acceleration speed to 10. Everything here is brand new. So I'm just gonna comment this out and we're just going to write everything from scratch. So the very first thing we wanna do is we wanna check that 
um, our vehicle is selected. So as we showed in our previous tutorial, that means if the camera is active. So if our camera is currently active is equal to true, then we do everything within our Sikorsky script. So the very first thing we want to do is we want to check our inputs. Very similar to what we had before, we check our vertical input, which is going to be negative input dot get action strength w plus input dot get action strength s and then our horizontal input oops there we go input dot get action strength a plus input dot get action strength D. So when it comes to setting our um, get action strength, just make sure that if we open our project and go to project settings with our input map, just make sure that these keys are already bound. So make sure to type them in, add them in, and assign the correct key. So after you've done that, what we want to do is we want to handle our la uh, landing and takeoff. So let's just come this as landing slash takeoff. And before, with our previous vehicle, um, our aircraft, we set this variable called grounded to check if we're uh, on the ground or in the air, and then set our actions accordingly. So we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to say if grounded is equal to true, if input dot is action pressed, space, and ver input is equal to negative one, our grounded is equal to false. Basically what this is checking, uh, if we're on the ground and we're holding the space key, meaning that we're attempting to take off, and then if we press W, which is upwards, then we'll essentially be going upwards and taking off the ground. After that, while we're in the air, we wanna make sure that our engine is set to zero, our steering is set to zero and our brake is set to zero. So we want to make sure that our wheels aren't turning or spinning while we're in the air. After that, what we're going to do, we're going to check if uh, we're in contact with the floor or not. So to do that, we're going to be getting our wheel notes. So if back left dot is in contact or back right dot is in contact or our front wheel dot is in contact then we're going to set our grounded is equal to true this is pretty self-explanatory Basically, what it means is if any of our wheels are in contact with the floor, uh, we're going to be setting our grounded variable to true. So we're switching between our takeoff and our landing. So now that's done, we can remove all of this and move on to the second part of the script. It's a fairly short script, actually. Um, the concept is pretty uh, straightforward. So I'll just explain it as we go. So for our air movement, if grounded is equal to false, let's just ignore this part for the time being. I'll explain why I put this here later on. If input dot is action pressed space linear velocity is dot y is equal to negative vertical input times transform dot basis dot y dot y times horsepower divided by 20. So in our previous tutorial, uh, we worked on our airplane and how this worked essentially is um, no matter which way it is, it is facing forward, it's going to move forward in that direction. 
we're kind of doing the same thing actually, but instead of uh, focusing on moving forward, we're actually going to be focusing on moving upwards. So instead of using our z-axis, we use our y-axis instead. So if we go back to our Sikorsky again, um, as you can see, what's happening here is it's getting our uh, upward position, which is our y position, and our uh, vertical input. So it's checking if we're going to be going upwards or downwards. So while we're pressing space, we'll either be moving upwards or we'll be moving downwards. And then our angular velocity is equal to vector 3.0. This is to make sure that any leftover angular velocity um, isn't making our uh, vehicle rotate in the air in undesired, undesired ways. And then afterwards, we have our angular velocity is dot y is equal to our horizontal input. All right. So with this in place right now, if we just kind of run the script, so let's just save it. I'll just uh, overwrite my previous Sikorsky scene. Let's switch to our helicopter. So we can move around. We should be able to move upwards. And we should be able to rotate this way and this way. And then if we touch the ground again, we re-enter our grounded state where we can move around just like that. So now that we have that motion, uh, what we want to check as well is if we're not pressing the space bar, if we're not focusing on going upwards or downwards, you want to make sure that our linear velocity dot y is equal to zero so we don't fall out the sky. And the second line of code um, is exactly what we wrote before for our defiant, our aircraft, sorry. Um, so if you check here, we use this code um, to rotate our plane left, right, up and down. We're going to be doing the same thing for the helicopter. The only difference is instead of lerping it by a value, we're just going to be having the value instantly become this value. So to do that, angle of velocity is equal to transform dot basis dot x times by a vertical input. So our local x-axis um, times by either a 0, 1, or negative 1, plus our z-axis, or negative transform basis dot z, meaning our uh, local forward axis is times by a horizontal input. So what this means is, if I'm pressing left or right, I'll be rotating along my local z-axis, left or right. Uh, if I press up or down, I'll be rotating along my local x-axis, upwards or downwards. And if I'm not pressing either, my angle of velocity will be set to zero to stop myself from over-rotating when I don't want to. So with that in place, if we test it out, switch to our helicopter. If I come off the ground, you'll see that if, I, if I'm not pressing the space bar, I can turn this way, I can turn this way, I can turn this way, and back. And if I'm holding the space bar, I can rotate this way and this way, and then land as normal. So this last part is the quote unquote interesting part of the script. Um, as you noticed before, what we did is we got our transform basis dot y, so basically our up direction, but we only got the y value um, from that transform basis. So the transform basis gave us a vector three. So if I explain this real quick, if we go to our Sikorsky straight from the front, upward direction along our y axis would be equal to one. But if we're slanted slightly, um, our upward direction is split between our y axis and our x axis. So our y speed would probably be like 0 0.9 and our x speed will probably be 0 0.1. And what we're doing is we're not interested in moving left or right in this instance. We're just getting our y speed. So that's the reason why here we only got our y value. So that way we'll be moving upwards relative to our angle of our vehicle. So. What we want to do now is we want to factor in our horizontal movement as well. So once we're leaning in any particular direction, 
we want to not use our y value and just focus on our horizontal movement, which is going to be our x and our z values. So if I type it in, it's going to be our linear velocity along the x-axis, which is equal to our transform basis dot y. We'll be getting the x value from that, and we'll be timesing it by our horsepower divided by 5. And then the same thing for our linear velocity dot z, transform dot basis dot y dot z times by horsepower divided by 5. And basically what this is going to do, if I show you, let's maximize this, switch to our helicopter. So if I'm leaning to the right, I'll be moving to the right. If I'm leaning to the left, I'll be moving to the left. And depending on how far I lean is how far or how fast I'll be moving in that direction, which is the more realistic way of doing it. And then I can just land my vehicle, rotate, and once I'm on the ground, I'm on the ground. And that's pretty much how it is. So, so one thing I've got to show you as well, uh, if we go back to our vehicle, you'll see that everything works as intended, but the one thing we need to fix is even though we can rotate in a particular direction, we can essentially rotate to the point where we're flying upside down. This isn't what we want, so we want to be able to fix this. And to fix this, we'll be setting a threshold. And that is what this line of code is here. So let me tap it out first, and I'll explain to you what it means. ABS rotation degrees, oops, degrees dot x is less than or equal to 90. And ABS rotation degrees dot z is less than or equal to 90. So we're going to be getting our rotation degrees along the x-axis and the z-axis, and we're making sure that is less than 90 degrees. The ABS function, what it does, it turns like a, neg a negative value <laughs> into a positive value. So for example, negative 90 will equal to 90. So it checks on both xi. So if I show you what it looks like, if I'm in the vehicle, and I rotate forward, everything's good. But if I go beyond the 90 degree mark, I fall out of the sky and my vehicle struggles to fly until I'm back in an upright position where I can fly as normal. All right, so very last thing as well, now that that's settled, is we need to animate our propellers. And to do that, let's go to animation, get our main propeller. So if we go here, you'll see that it rotates along the y-axis and our back propeller rotates along the x-axis. So our main propeller dot rotation dot y plus equals 0 0.4 and our back propeller dot rotation dot x minus equals 0 0.4. So if everything is correct, you'll see that everything is animated. We can move around. We can take off. Holding space, we can rotate along the y-axis. And then we can turn rotate our vehicle and move in the direction that we're leaning. And we can land our vehicle and return to the grounded state. And that's pretty much it. It's a pretty quick video. The concept is uh, very similar to the aircraft we did before, but it works, it looks decent, and yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for watching. If you have any suggestions, feedback, feel free to let me know, and have a great day.